The purple carpet is back. That can only mean one thing. We're doing another video on ROC equipment. Uh, this week we're going to look at all the handheld uh, meters, uh, both Geiger counters, survey meters, contamination meters used by the Royal Observer Corps um, Civil Defence. So we're going to start off with this nice little unit. Uh, again, this is made by Evo, the same company that made the original series of fixed survey meters. Uh, this is a Mark VI, an Evo survey, well, as you can see here, Evo Mark VI meter survey radiac. Uh, now, this little handheld meter, um, sometimes you'll find them, they're called kidney meters sometimes because, you know, well, you can see by the shape of it, it looks like a kidney. Uh, but Scaled in uh, Ronkin per hour, um, it goes from 0 to 100 Ronkin uh, per hour. So it's reasonably high level handheld meter. And this would have been the first, uh, very, very first portable, uh, very, very easily transported lightweight meter uh, that the Royal Observer Corps would have used for mobile monitoring. And it is the basically the direct successor to, uh, to this unit here. Uh, this is obviously the, the PDRM82 um, with its neck lanyard. Um, they would have used this unit um, probably up until the, the mid, mid 60s. Uh, again, the battery situation, the just the very odd shaped batteries that these took, uh, they were very, very high powered. So, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, 15 volt batteries, things like that there to run, to run these units. Um, very, very straightforward uh, unit to work. Um, just an on-off switch, a uh, couple of calibrations, a zero, and just a, a battery check. Uh, these do come up for sale reasonably often. Um, you pay maybe 80, 90 pounds for one of these. Ugh. We'll leave that again. Well, I know there's loads of videos in these. Everybody knows what they are. So I'm only really gonna be using this for a, a little side to side comparison. We'll be talking about this much. Right, next, uh, we'll do the contamination meters next. So, this is the uh, contamination meter uh, introduced in 1955. Uh, this is the uh, contamination meter number one, Mark II. Um, and generally they would come in this big weatherproof satchel. And the one on this is the uh, contamination meter uh, number one, Mark one. And I'll take it out so you can see the differences. Uh, put this over here. So that's the Mark one and that's the Mark two. Right. Can you spot any differences straight off the bat? There we go. That's really the only difference. Uh, weatherproofed, the, uh, this is the Mark II, this is the Mark I. Uh, they found that the connections were shorting out in the rain. So they uh, changed the connector on the uh, probe, which I have here. So that's the probe. And uh, that's the Geiger Miller probe. And they changed the connector to a rubber, rubberized connector so that the uh, rubberized connector could go on. Um, one of these, I believe it's this one, I have set up uh, so that it will... Oh, of course. <laughs> there, that's the way it goes on. There we go. Okay, so that's connected now. There's the probe connected. I'll put that there. And if I turn it on and do a battery test, you'll hear this bizarre noise. So you'll probably hear that buzzing noise. Uh, that's the power unit at the bottom, which I'll turn around and show you. That's the power unit and you'll notice it's in this little battery slot there. And uh, this actually runs on four AA batteries. So you can put four AA batteries into this. Um, they came up with this little design here. Um, originally it was this big power unit and you had to be these big bulky batteries and they actually came out with a, a modernized version that you can actually put uh, proper AA batteries into, which was good. And the uh, byproduct of that is that this unit was in use 
uh, right up until the 1980s, I believe it or not. Uh, you know, a unit that came out in 1955, they used it right up until the 1980s. And uh, very, very rare to see one actually working. Um, generally, these get the water damage, things like inside, and that's them, they've, they've gone. A uh, lot of capacitors in, inside here, but it's nice to get it working. jump in. Um, I, uh, when I was editing the video, I thought, what the hell, I'll take this unit apart, see if anything can be swapped out inside, resistors, uh, things like that there, um, and see if I can get the unit working. So I have a check source sitting on beside the probe here, um, and I'm moving it backwards and forwards as I'm doing the video. Um, and as you can see, it is detecting, now I'm gonna set it right on top. And as you can see, it is, and as I take it away, it drops down again. So I think I have it working. Now I'm gonna play about it a bit more, but if I do have it working, this is the first contamination meter I have ever seen that still works. Uh, so I just thought it was worth uh, jumping into the video there um, and showing you this. Um, so uh, yeah, any more updates, I'll, um, I'll let you know. <laughs> but the two units, um, as you can see, very, very, very similar. Only difference was that they, uh, they changed the connector on it. Uh, this was in use by the Royal Observer Corps for, they would have used them in group headquarters uh, for people going out and doing mobile monitoring. Um, when they came back in, they would have used it to decontaminate. Uh, British Army would have used it, Royal Air Force would have used it, uh, British Civil Defence would have used it. Um, if you've ever seen the, um, I think it's the, what is the book, Kelvin Hatch um, over in England, uh, as you walk down the sort of the entrance hall, a Cold War museum there, they have hundreds of these stacked up against the wall. Uh, but yeah, these are these are a nice, nice unit. And uh, sometimes they're vastly overpriced in eBay. You'll, I, I picked, I think, this one up for about eight quid, and I picked this one up for about 20 quid. Uh, you'll see them for go as high as about 80 sometimes. Um, for what you're getting, um, I don't, personally, I don't think it's worth it. If you really, really want one, you know, okay, go for it, but you can get them for ridiculously cheap money. Uh, the, the case, the, the Havoc sack that they come in, um, you get a probe, you get a microphone, uh, or not a microphone, you get a headset, plugs in here. Uh, you get a probe, you get that the unit itself, instruction manual, stuff like that there. Um, but yeah, they are quite a nice unit. And uh, if you can get one that works, um, there's a 240 volt connector as well that can go in the bottom of this. Uh, so you can you can have it running of three mains part. Right, what's next? Okay, we look at the uh, these little radiac meters. So uh, just after this unit, um, this unit wasn't in use for very, very long. Um, just after the Royal Observer Corps went underground, um, they were given these. And this is a UK coal uh, meter survey radiac number two. Very, very common unit uh, in use by the Royal Navy, Royal Air Force again, British Army used right up until the 1990s, these units. Uh, very, very, very hardy. Uh, I think, let me see, what was the last calibration date on this one? Uh, 1979 was the last calibration date on this one. Um, but they're very, very, very hardy units. Um, they run on D-cell batteries. You know, it's they have a, a internal light inside. You can turn on this little bulb socket on the side there. Uh, they will do right up to 300 ronkins an hour. Uh, you can scale them. There's uh, zero to three ronkins per hour, uh, zero to 30 ronkin per hour, and zero to 300 ronkin per hour, just by, if I bring it up close, you can see there. You can change the scale. Yeah, but they're, like, they're a really nice little units, you know, quite hardy. Again, uh, I've seen these sell for as cheap as three pounds. I've seen them sell for as much as a hundred pounds. So shop around for these if you really want one, you will get one. There are thousands of these for sale every year. And then the next one is the training unit 
for the radiac meter. So strangely enough, it's a lot larger, as you can see here. Uh, and there's the uh, instruction manual for it. But as you can see, size comparison wise, uh, you know, this is almost double the size, <laughs> Big Brother version of it. Um, but it's scaled in uh, Ronkin power again, and it's not to three. Uh, and that's literally all it is scaled in, is not to three. And you can see you've got a set zero, and then you've got an off. But that's it, it's scaled in not to three. So during training, they would have had a, possibly a three Ronkin um, Radiac check source to uh, test this. And you can see here, really that would have been the battery for the light. And uh, then you had one, two, three, four batteries in there and this ran on again 15 volt batteries massive big batteries to run this um but that's uh pretty much yeah i mean now that's every single uh unit that would have been used by the royal observer corps uh and uk civil defense really they would have used these meters they would have used the contamination meters uh, and then obviously finishing off with the uh, the Plessy PDRM82. Um, but, you know, that's, <laughs> there's quite a lot of, uh, of equipment there. Um, but if you want to have everything, um, I'll try to get it all into shot. If you want to collect all the variations, um, you're, you know, you don't have to spend too much money. I've been collecting this stuff for 10 years. Uh, really, Spend your time. Don't rush. You really don't need a rush if you want to collect this stuff. The best way to do it is just to wait and watch the stuff. Eventually, it will come up for sale. And eventually, it will come up for sale at a cheap enough price that you're not going to break the bank buying it. Um, you know, there are literally hundreds and thousands of these, the PDRM 82s. You know, do not spend more than 30 pounds. These, there are hundreds and thousands of those. Again, as I said, eight quid will pick you up one of these on a good day. Uh, these meters here, uh, these go for a bit more expensive. The training units, um, maybe 40 to 50 pounds for one of these. These are a bit rarer. Uh, these meters here, you know, a fiver, six quid, you know, 20 tops. And that'll get you the box. That will get you the instructional manual. It'll get you all the, uh, the records of when the unit was serviced. Um, you know, get, you know, everything should be in its box, pretty much brand new, uh, and you'll get all that. Uh, but yeah, that, that's all, that's all the units, uh, all the handheld units that would have been used. Um, hopefully you find that interesting. Any comments, please leave them down below. Next time we will look at the personal decimeter chargers, uh, starting from the sort of the, uh, the hand cranked dyno ones, uh, right up until the battery ones. And, uh. Yeah, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.